collect if a wood collector would collect wood. Oh, about 3,500 different exotic types that we're going to be taking a look at today on personal effects. So stay with us. Would you? <laughs> Never die. We would, John, and I'll even knock some wood around here. Stuffy apartment, it's a wonderful apartment. Welcome to you all. On Personal FX, we've got some great people here to have items appraised. You are? Bernie. Bernie, nice to have you here. Joe. Joe? Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Lisa. Lisa. And Dylan. Now the two of you are friends? Yeah. Yes, we are. You go off to garage sales and flea markets together? Yeah. All the time. Sure. Do you ever both see something at the same time? I gotta have it. Once in a while. Once in a while we, we have. We wrestled each other to the ground once. <laughs> <laughs> now another set of friends here. The two of you are friends. Yeah. Does that ever happen? Uh, no, we usually we collect different things. Uh, what was your best find? Oh, oh painting. Dog paintings. Dog I paintings? I'm a portrait artist. I paint dogs and I collect the antique paintings. Oh, that's wonderful. Anybody collect anything with wood in it? Because today that's what we're about to see. We're going to go back to Eugene Ari. It looks beautiful there. I knocked a little wood here, John. Uh, what are you looking at there? I'm looking at Malacan Alnith and Alstonia Macrop. What's that? Exotic different woods. There are over 50,000, I think, different kinds of woods in the world, and our super collector today is Alan Curtis. Alan, thank you, sir, for having us here. Hi, John. Welcome to our wood pile. Well, thank you very much. You have a whole system going here of your collection, right? What is this? Yes. Here? Well, these are pieces that are waiting really to be finished. They're drying. Uh, wood has a lot of moisture in it when it's first cut, and these are pieces I've collected all primarily in Florida. But when they're dry, they'll be made into all kinds of craft pieces. Well, Claire, he's got a whole collection upstairs. We're actually downstairs amongst all these exotic pieces of wood. And in a minute, we're going to go upstairs, and we're going to take a look at not only more exotic pieces, but also some of the things that you can do with them. And, John, probably a lot of us didn't realize there were that many different kinds of wood. Yeah, yeah. You know what else you don't realize? What? that the cat that was in the open is now roaming around in here with us with the wood. Hi. <laughs> I saw you playing with that cat before. <laughs> it's you... not even his. It's not even his. We don't no, even don't know who owns this cat. <laughs> Well, we'll look forward to seeing the wood collection and find out what happens to the cat later on in the program. And a reminder, I see all these wonderful dwarfs here. Some of these items that you're seeing on the table could be up for sale. So 1-800-FX-FX-FX1 is the number to write down and remember to use if it is up for sale. Don, you want to be our first guest up at Bad here? Sure. Can I help you with... Oh, just this one item. Just this one Come item. Come on over. Let me introduce you right here to Judith Cat Schwartz, who was here yesterday teaching us about tin toys. Hi. Alan Hi. Schrem, good to see you. We're here, so you know what happened. Yes. But Alan, you were, and I don't know if you got to see yesterday's show. We had on Joe from Clifton, New Jersey, brought on a pottery thing. He and his wife didn't think it was worth very much. Turns out it could be two to 4,000 years old. It could be Shang Dynasty clay pot worth possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we have Joe, we have Robert, Bob, you got to get it right, Robert on the line right now, because we want to find out, hi Robert. How you doing, Claire? Welcome to the program. Thank want you. to know if you've gotten it tested yet. Oh, uh, well, we've been uh, trying all morning to uh, try to get it authenticized, but, you know, uh, and uh, we, we, we just haven't had any luck. It, it's, it's pretty hard to get uh, in contact with, uh, you know, with, uh, people. Well, why don't we talk after the show? We'll get on the phone and somehow put you in touch with the museum or whoever it is who would yeah, need to. Museum is the best place, the best to place? Go. and uh, we can get him a curator from. Yeah, get him a curator, right. and will you come back to the show after we find out for sure what it's worth? Absolutely. You can try Sotheby's too. Just sure. let me you know, ask you one thing: What are you going to do with all that money if it is authentic? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Pay off a lot of bills, I guess, and uh, uh, take everybody to dinner. That okay, sounds yeah. good. We like that. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Great invitation. Thank you so much for being on the line. He was smiling so yesterday when we said it could possibly be worth. Oh, sure. Now let's see what you brought in. May not be worth as much as that, but... Well, this is a great looking uh, piece of glass. Where did you get turn it? it over? Actually, my grandparents, before I was born, had gone back to Italy to see their families. And when they came back, they brought this in a perfume bottle. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh, 
also Vanini. It says Vanini on the bottom, and uh, Murano glass is very popular and uh, a really hot collectible. As a matter of fact, even new Murano glass brings good prices at auction. And Vanini was one of the premier Murano glass makers. Uh, they started in 1925, they're still in operation, and their stuff is still worth a lot of money. Do you know their stuff through markings, or how would you know? Yes. I mean, well, you can see it's a nice piece of glass. Yeah, it also uh, looks to me to be a sort of made on a one-of-a-kind type of thing. I think each design of each one was different that they did. And um, especially this here, if you take a look how nice it's, and it looks like actually like a piece of artwork. Mm. In a sense, it was really done really nice. It's beautiful. I think it's a good piece of glass, too, very sellable. Yeah, and I, I don't know how old it is, but, uh, but did you say it came? It, it was like in the 50s that they had gone back to yeah. Italy. It was mm -hmm. before I was born. Okay, so, so this is actually a later, later piece of uh, Murano glass, and it still is worth on the market probably somewhere around three hundred dollars. I'd say about one hundred and fifty dollars or so, but it's a nice piece and all. One hundred fifty to three hundred dollars. Yeah, about, about one hundred fifty dollars is what I think it's worth. Do you use it to display it? Usually top alley. Well, <laughs> it's it's been you know sitting on a shelf for a while. I'd like to entertain offers. I'd like you to what? see what you know what people we'll have been on. We'll be happy to do it. that for you. Okay, thank you. Happy to make you smile at the end of the show. <laughs> thank you so much for being here, Mary Lou is joining us now. What interesting. Holy Moses. I love the glass. Now, where did you get this? Somebody gave it to my mother when she moved to Cape Cod. I don't to that end, Claire. Yes. Don't let go. Okay. We're, we're don't both go. responsible now, Jess. And my mother gave it to me. Huh. This is... This is very interesting. This is a very uh, now, unusual piece. This is a piece of glass, all right. And I this see it's got a little, it, little yes. paint on it. And um, wait, we're going to, Alan, you run your hands down that end to see if you, there are any chips. Down yeah, it Just seems to have a few, few nicks here and there. Usually but, they get uh, broken on the tip. Can you yeah, feel the tip? It's not. Amazing. Well, that's great. That is amazing. But a piece like this but to remain without any chips and stuff would definitely command a premium price, looking at it and seeing how hard it is. Are you saying this is an unusual it. piece to see a glass staff? Yeah, this is, I mean, I first saw this. I was really amazed. I really think it's a beautiful piece. You um, know what, what's fairly, well, fairly common is glass canes, but you don't see a glass staff this like is, this very often. This is a very well-made, it's also a very well-made glass, well, too. Which is interesting. Yeah. You, know, you got that? Yeah. Where do you keep it in your house? I keep it in the closet because I have two Simon's cats. Well, let my people go. <laughs> it's also, I, I might say, this a lovely great. color. This, this particular color would look very well here in the studio, so... <laughs> I think, I think it would look I, very good with a giant olive inside a giant martini. <laughs> <laughs> could work. Now, there's a store called Think Big. They sell things yeah, like that. Well, yeah, they sell enormous pencils mm -hmm. and stuff like it's that. It's very so important also to find out who made this piece of glass, too. Um, you should really try to uh, do a little research. I How might do you be do able the to research? Support you. you have to call maybe some dealers that mm -hmm. might specialize mm -hmm. in glass, or it could be uh, any one of the famous glass makers that might have yeah, done a piece of glass. Yeah, because it's not marked, so we, we yeah, don't know. I'm a little afraid to. Uh, it's quite possible. It looks like a nice piece, and I think without the markings, nice how would you know in terms of setting a value? Um, well, basically, you have to go just from the quality and the condition mm -hmm. of the piece and, and the how well it's made. In other words, if you saw this at a show, you know, or in an antique shop, how much would you be willing it, to pay for mm -hmm. it? It's, it's an unusual piece. I mean, when when somebody sees this, they automatically their attention goes right to it, which makes it, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a very sellable piece, and a lot of people would. Have a lot of interest so in it. at what price? No, uh, I would say any. I'd say about four or five hundred dollars. I don't think it would be a problem. I'd say two like to this. three. But it would be really impressive out in a display at a show. It would be considered, mm -hmm. you know, the showstopper. It's, it's a nice old piece of glass. Two to five hundred dollars. You're right. currently keeping it in your well, closet. I would like to maybe pass it on to a collector. Somebody mm -hmm. would really appreciate it and display it. Maybe somebody doesn't have Siamese cats. That's or animals. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being here. When Oops. I, no. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Stay seated for just a second, and let me tell you, the audience, for those people who can't come to our New York apartment, this is how you can be a guest on the show and meet John on location, tell you about some of the cities where he's going to be. And he's going to be next week in Colorado Springs, after that the week of February 13th in New Orleans, and then the week of February 20th in Kansas City, and our telephone number to call is 212-802-4081. But right now we're going to go back to Eugene, Oregon, and Mary Ann is going to be showing us an item that she's going to want you guys to have it praised. What have you got there? I have an angel food cake pan that belonged to Alan's mother. It's uh, from the 1920s. And when we were cleaning out their home after they moved to Long Island to be near their daughter. And we're going to have it appraised on FX. Mm -hmm. Say that. And we're going to have it appraised on FX. Perfect. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Dennis Franz. You're watching FX, TV with you in mind. I joined Jenny Craig and I love the personal taste program. You are offered a new way of living because it's so flexible and it gives you lots of choices. I get to choose the foods that I like to eat. If I can put it in my schedule, then I know anybody can. Announcing the brand new personal taste program only at Jenny Craig. Lose all the weight you want for just a dollar a pound. Call 1-800-92-JENNY today. That's 1-800-92-JENNY. Julie Parcells, patient, Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I knew what I wanted when I was eight years old to play in a symphony orchestra. It took years of practice, but I made it. When I was 24, I joined the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. But in 1988, it looked like all I worked for might end. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was terrified. Then I found a cancer treatment program I could believe in, one that offered more than the latest treatment methods. It used nutrition to strengthen the immune system, treated the whole person, not just the cancer, and gave me the stamina to keep playing. Find out how we can help you. Call Cancer Treatment Centers of America, 1-800-515-0172, 1-800-515-0172. I found Cancer Treatment Centers, and I've treasured every concert since. You can stop destruction in your neighborhood. FX wants you to take a stand. Hi, I'm Gwen McGee in North Philadelphia, where Partners for Progress is hard at work. Partners for Progress is a working partnership formed between local government and the people in the community to take back and clean up neighborhoods. With a little bit of help from the city, people in North Philadelphia have cleaned up over 5,500 blocks, 1,500 inlets, 850 vacant lots, and cleaned and sealed over 300 abandoned homes. Together, the people of the community and city officials are taking a stand to make North Philadelphia a safer place to live. Find out what you can do to start a program like Partners for Progress in your area. You can begin by simply organizing a letter writing campaign to your local officials. Don't wait to take action. Be part of the solution. Stop the anger in neighborhood destruction. Take a stand. personal FX. Well, it seems to be glass day around here. So far we saw the glass bowl and the very interesting glass staff, and they are up for sale. So remember, we have our 800 number. And I... My microphone out here? Okay. I always have to ask Alan during the commercial break, what did he eat? <laughs> He's always got something, right, yes. Yeah, I come on, Alan. Alan asked that, and he said, I'll spill my guts. He'll, he'll, spill he'll, guts. he'll tell you the truth. Yes. Anybody can have. Go ahead. He's going to say, spill welcome. the beans, but there are no beans there, Alan. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go back right now to Eugene, where Marianne has something she wants to show us. Hi there, Marianne. Welcome to the program. Tell us again about your item. Hello, Claire. Uh, this angel food cake pan has the, it, in the bottom of it, blends <coughs> down cake flour, makes better cake. Eleven. It's about nine inches across, three and a half inches deep. And it has another feature. Okay, you good? It has little doors on the side that you close so it will not let the dough run out. But then when you're ready to remove the cake, you take a pan, the pan, and loosen it. Marianne, have you put a lot of angel cakes in that pan? Do I make a lot? Yes. <laughs> no. Has it been used a lot? <laughs> I have it hanging on my kitchen wall as a decoration. Oh, it's strictly for decoration. It's a great looking piece. Yeah, it's great yes. looking. It's a tin uh, swan's down flour pan and swans down also made shortening uh they made a lot of other food products they make better cakes because they make better so. much this better a cakes. nice advertising piece yes. too and i want to point out it breaks into two different types of markets it breaks into the advertising memorabilia market and also the country collectible market which would be the kitchen collectibles yes and the kitchen collectibles and it it actually is uh, it's a, nice a very piece. popular I, kitchen collectible. I do, so. and also a lot of people are paying big dollars for advertising stuff nowadays. But what uh, kind of big dollars? Uh, I'd say this that? piece is probably about maybe forty to about sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. And I disagree, okay, because okay. I I think that you're entitled. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Alan won't hit me. Not um, yet. No, okay. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it. Um, 
I, I think it's worth something in the $20 range because they're not particularly rare, but they, they're lovely. It's, it's a nice tin pan. It has no rust on it. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be scratched up, but it's probably a $20 item. 20 up to yeah. $60. Well, we have a little difference here. That's okay. Did you have any interest in putting it up for sale? Not at all. You like <laughs> and it? And thank you. <laughs> you like it exactly where it is, hanging up. Right. Thank you so much for being with us. And Lisa's joining us right now. With a whole shopping bag full of goodies? Well, Alan, food, food, food. Food. Okay. Food. Yeah. No Remove problem. the drink, even. Sure. What have you got? Have a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Walt Disney Productions, rubber oh, doll set. Oh. Where'd you get the set? Um, a friend of mine and I bought it at a house sale, a neighbor's house sale. And for how much? Okay. Um, we bought quite a large group of things together. I love going uh, through bags with toys. Yes. And well, it's a, great, isn't it? They get a look squeak. at the face. I mean... <laughs> What do you mean? You squeeze them and they... They squeak. Oh, the, actually, yeah. the heads. The heads, I believe. Snow White's having a dream here. Look at these eyes. Um, well, these are... It's interesting. Snow White was the first feature-length animated film ever. And the reason the collectibles from Snow White were so popular is they appealed to girls. And now all these girls are grown up. And what happened was Walt Disney in the 60s started his Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. Mm -hmm. And that just... There was a resurgence in all these Disney collectibles, and especially things like Snow White, because they always appeal to women. And uh, this, I wouldn't say it's as value as the ones made by Cyberling Rubber in the 30s. But these are pretty nice, and they're very displayable. They look yeah. really good on the table. Do you keep and them displayed on a table? Oh, uh, no. On a shelf? You keep them. them in a bag and then tucked away? Oh, well, kind of, yeah. yeah. you should put these things... I love <laughs> oh, to put no. these things out because these look terrific. Yeah. And I have to explain to you, a lot of people will walk in and they see it displayed, catches their eye, and also that's what makes it very sellable, too, especially the Disney stuff. Right. And there's a mark so on here. It says Walt Disney Productions, and it says 1963. And so. productions will always mean, if you ever see Walt Disney Productions, it means it's post-1940. Before that was Walt Disney Enterprises. Mm -hmm. So if you see Enterprises, you'll always know you have one of the better pieces, and that's before that they changed to Walt Disney so Productions. So this is one of the later pieces? Either later, but yeah. still but, good. But worth about what? About 20 $25 a piece. I agree yes. with Alan. They're, they're worth between $20 and $30 each. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, you might get more money on the... Uh, on Snow, on especially with this expression on her face. Yeah. So she might be worth more than... Yeah, she, yeah, has, she, might, she has a, a star, little, bit, you know? little bit of problem with the uh, paint on the arms and stuff, but little, otherwise yeah, she's okay. Also under her collar, a little paint coming well, because off. Because you're not keeping these out and display, does that mean you're interested in selling? Oh, yeah. We, I would entertain offers. Okay, we like that. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be happy to do that for okay, you. Thank you very That'll much. do that last squeak. <laughs> they each squeak this one. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. We don't squeeze the dwarves. We don't squeeze the dwarves. Oh, I know. They wanted some attention. You know, they've been in the closet. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank and you. Joe is going to join us now. With some, Hi. I guess, a vase. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Where'd you get this? Okay, when my parents got married 35 years ago, mm -hmm. they came here and uh, a neighbor of theirs gave it to them. It was one of a set. It is still is one of a set. And, uh, and where does that come from? Uh, we don't know. I don't know. Well, it certainly looks oriental. You want to check out the mark on the bottom? Yeah, first I wanted to see if it's closed in A or not. Well, you want me to check Possibly, it out? Let's yeah, see. Take a look for see, claws in A, of course, is a type of enameling where there are hundreds of little wires, copper wires, and then the, the glass. Uh, is poured in around them and then it's baked. But no, this is not cloisonné. This is, has an applied decoration on it, little gold dots, and then all, also all of these are applied. So that makes it less valuable? No, not or necessarily. Not. Yes, it's, no. It seems to be hand painted. Here, Alan's got the mark up now. You can see the crazing on it too. So this is an older piece. It's definitely not newer. Mm -hmm. I don't recognize this mark. No, the mark seems to be... But you can get a dictionary of marks that have lists Japanese marks, mm -hmm. American marks, English marks, European marks. Mm -hmm. So you could be able to find anything pretty much in a library or something like that. And then you'll know the country of origin. It yeah, yes. Covell's makes a great, um, you know, dictionary um, book of marks. Mm -hmm. It's called Dictionary of Marks. It's and great the, and piece the new dictionary of marks. They actually put out two of them. But it's a nice piece and it's well made and that will always tell you it's, you know, more expensive than something that was just commercially done. Okay, and without knowing everything about it, what would you I'd say about two fifty for this piece. Uh, it's something in the two hundred dollar range. Yeah. Two hundred. It's a very beautiful piece. And it's yeah. a set. Does that mean? Uh, yeah, but I, I have, de definitely have. Oh, a, you have a I have another one. A, a it's pair. not exactly the same design on it. 
it's the same people, it's just they're doing different things. The same source, <laughs> it's probably worth something in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. same, same well, neighborhood. it's been in for your okay. family for a while. Did you yeah. want to hold on to it? Or uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to hold on to it. I'll definitely hold on to it. <laughs> definite <laughs> about that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And we're going to go back to Eugene, Oregon. I didn't know there were so many different kinds of woods. Yes. Real education in woods. Yes. That is beautiful. What a beautiful shot. Hey, John. Hey. Alan loves trees so much that he actually built his deck around the tree. And what did he use to build the deck? Maybe a wooden chainsaw? More of Alan's wood collection coming up on Personal FX. Dear Mom, FX Secret Agent Camp is really cool. We spend lots of time outdoors playing in the woods and our hide-and-go-seek games are the best. We even have a marching band. It's a bit rough sometimes, but my friends and I are handling it like real troopers. Plus, we love our field trips. Oh, one more thing. This letter will self-destruct in five seconds. Sign up for Mission Impossible Boot Camp every night at 6, 5 Central, only on FX. Inside this precious package is the photo and personal history of an actual living, breathing, wonderful child who urgently needs your love. Hello, I'm Christina Clariday for Children International. Sponsorship is the most loving, personal way to help a needy child overseas. And I want to send you this kit absolutely free and with no obligation so you can see for yourself one little boy or little girl waiting to be sponsored. You'll get to know that child and find out if sponsorship is for you. You're not obligated, so call for your free kit now. Tell us if you prefer a boy or a girl, and you may choose your child's country. We'll select an individual child especially for you and rush you her photo and personal history, information about her country, answers to your questions, and more. Just look at this child who lives in poverty in the Philippines. She needs nutritious food and medical care. This little boy struggles to survive in a disease-infested slum. Here's a child from the Dominican Republic. And this little girl desperately needs a chance to go to school. Won't you call now? This isn't some abstract concept like millions of starving children. This is a real child. And you will hold his picture and learn how you can change his life. Later, if you decide to become his sponsor, your monthly gift is only $12, and you'll get letters from your child, updated photos, and more. This affordable $12 program is possible because we look for ways to keep costs down without sacrificing the care your child receives. But this precious package is free, and there's no obligation, so call now for the photo and case history of one little child who needs you. Call 1-800-913-4455. That's 1-800-913-4455. FX is on for you day and night. Should I wake you up in the morning? Whether you're a day person or more of a night crawler, FX is on. In the morning, we'll help you decide what to wear. We'll give you the latest in headline news. And at night, we'll play the latest tunes. Could I make a suggestion? Sure you can. Each night on Back Chat. Tell us how you think we're doing. Send it our way. We'll be eternally grateful. FX. We're on. Day and night. Oh, how about an FX nightcap? A little Batman before bedtime? Did you know, with over 50,000 different types of trees in the world, only 550 are native to the United States? You know, 300 of those are native to Florida alone. We need more trees in New York. Welcome back now to Personal FX. We're going to show off the items that are up for sale. First of all, we have the glass bowl. Yes, that you're holding up. <laughs> worth anywhere from $150 to $300. And then the glass staff. I felt I needed to rise to the occasion here <laughs> for the glass staff to show it off properly. <laughs> worth about too, $200 yeah. to $500. And then we have all the wonderful Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Do we know how to name all of these? Not me. Not me. Not me either. But they're worth 20 to 30 each, except Snow White is the star, so she's probably yeah. worth a little bit more than that. A little bit bigger, too, so. A little bit bigger. So remember, we have our 800 number for you to call to make offers. So at the end of the show, we can tell you what some of the big bids are of the day. Now we're going to go back to Eugene. That tree was so incredible, John. I realize how much I miss trees and woods living in New York City. I agree, Claire. And when you walk through Alan's house, then you start going, 
Oh, that's made of wood. Oh, that's wood. Like, like this lampshade here. Oh, that's made of wood. Everywhere around here, he has a real appreciation for wood. Alan Curtis, thank you again, sir, for having us. Glad Great to have you, John. Now, when you collect wood, you have certain guidelines. You, you don't chop the tree down, right? No, I don't. I go to places where they're clearing for a road or home building or land clearing for farming, and I look for the trees there, and I look for the leaves, the flowers, the fruit, in order to be identified mm -hmm. the tree. Then I like to cut a piece of wood, and you saw those blocks in the basement. And after they dry, mm -hmm. then I make these specimens. <laughs> this size here is a standard of the International Wood Collectors Society. And we trade samples around. Sometimes ones I get, other people in parts of the world would like to have. So we exchange back John, and forth. excuse yes, me. Sir. Is that a belt buckle of wood that you're wearing? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yes, I've got a belt buckle, Claire, of wood. Wow. It's, it's like I was saying, Claire, as you walk through this house, oh, that's made of wood. <laughs> you just keep, it just keeps going. Now, Alan, back to the piece that you were talking about. Tell me about this piece. And, and I know it, it correlates kind of to this yes. one, huh? Yes, the olive here in John's right hand is about 10 years it took for that tree to grow. We count the rings on the end of the piece. The bristlecone pine here is 340 years in age. It took the same three inches, but 340 years. How do you know so much about this well, tree? Well, I use a hand lens and I count the rings, John. Ah. Every year the tree grows, it adds a ring. Hmm. Look at, look at these interesting ones here. Tell me about these kind of pieces. This looks like... Uh, well, this looks a little bit like Swiss cheese. It's actually cactus from the deserts of Mexico and Arizona. And it just grows with those strange holes in it. John, I want to ask the, you a question. Does he ever run out of firewood in the wintertime over there? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's a good question. Do you use gas in your fireplace? No, no we have a wood-burning fireplace, and we don't run out of wood. We have plenty of scraps. <laughs> This is one that you asked about. It's a tiger-striped figure in Oregon myrtle wood. It's rather rare, and it makes beautiful little turned objects because of the unusual nature of it. What do you do with it? Like this one, too, you can, you can use this for a specific? Yes, this mm -hmm. is fiddleback big leaf maple, and this is used in violins and fiddles. It's the wood that you see on the back of the fiddle. Is that how the fiddle got its name? That's how it got its name. No huh? kidding. <laughs> oh, that's cool. This one is this, rare. This one is rare, yes. This is probably the, the rarest of all that I have. It's one I didn't collect myself. It comes from South Africa. It's called Pink Ivory. Now, just this well, little block yeah. costs? Uh, if you could find one of this quality, it would be about $25. $25 for just that size. And Claire, as you can see, they come in all yeah. different... This one's yellow. I mean, none of this is stained. This is all their actual color out of... The woods. John, and you, yes, there's so many different woods there. Alan, do you have a very favorite, the one that you think is just the most exceptional? It's, it's hard to say, Claire, although I'm really prejudiced towards this one. Yeah, that's nice. It looks a little bit like a snake skin, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a most unusual pattern in the woods. What is that it? That came from Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's a cordia. It came from Mexico. You couldn't find these in a lumberyard or anything, could you? No. No, that's why I enjoy this hobby, is that it's not the commercially available woods. It's ones that I've gone out and looked for, and that usually are too small to be commercially available. But they're out there, like, like the factoid said, 50,000 of them in the world. And let's show him some of the things that you can make with this. Okay, right? let's do that. And Claire, what I think is really interesting is that he gets this wood from all over. People even just flat out just send it to him in the mail. Just a big chunk of wood, send it to the guy in the mail. <laughs> Now, I know, Claire, you like costume jewelry. You remember sure the piece do. that we are talking about mm -hmm. here? This is a, a piece of jewelry that was made from pink ivory. And it's one of the favorite woods of jewelry, ma jewelry makers because it is so hard and takes a beautiful polish. How lovely. Now, finally, Ellen, you have a really neat story. Claire, listen to this story about Hurricane <laughs> Andrew. Tell me about Hurricane that. Hurricane Andrew hit South Florida back in August of 92. And I went down as a volunteer for six weeks to Fairchild Tropical Garden in Miami and helped clean up the downed trees. I got this plaque in recognition. But the bowl that I'm holding here was produced from some of the wood that was salvaged after the hurricane when the local craftsmen turned this beautiful bowl. So you actually went down there, helped clean up the botanical gardens. They sold the wood that you yeah. helped saw up, and they, they got how much for that? Yes, that's right, John. We had a public sale of the lumber that was produced, and the garden raised $38,000. Wow. So, Claire, he went down there, volunteer basis, for six weeks, was it, he was there? 
And they actually took the wood that everybody thought they might throw out, they sawed it, and they sold it to rebuild the gardens after making $38,000. What a wonderful idea to turn something very positive into this terrible hurricane. Beautiful yeah, that's piece a great, of wood. Great lesson for all mm. of us. Thank you very much, sir, for showing us You're welcome. Your, your appreciation of, of wood. This is beautiful. It's nice to have you visit. Thank you. It's my pleasure. How Pretty great. Neat, huh, it certainly is. We see the finished products, but we don't know where it all comes from sometimes. Thank you so much, Alan. That was great. And Bernie is joining us now. Not a, not a piece of wood, though. Today's wood day, Claire. This is wood day. This is wood day. Whoa. This Let's looks like the snack table. Now tell us yes. the story behind the snack well, table. Well, it's not much of a story. Where I lived in an apartment house, there was this old lady that has Alzheimer's disease. She had to be institutionalized, unfortunately. And I helped out in the care of her mm -hmm. while she was living at home. And the son gave me these... Uh, these little snack tables as a gift for helping for out. Thank you for and being so He helpful. told me he knew that they were at least from the 40s, I believe, mm -hmm. from when he was a child. It seems to be the 40s or 50s, these tables. Holds up. And they seem to be, uh, you know, pretty nice. They're used a lot in decorating nowadays. This time period is really popular now. And a lot of people are using them to decorate. And now the price of this stuff is soaring. Where 10 years ago, you couldn't give this stuff away. You really couldn't. The stuff would be sitting in antique marts yeah. and stuff like that. And it has, it has an Asian look. You know, it looks like it's been laminated and. Uh, but it's a commercial Japan, piece. This is know. not. There's no quality here. This is something that you walked in and you know you paid. Uh, you yeah, bought a set of four. Yeah, things go through phases where sometimes they're popular and then they're not. Feds, and feds, yeah, feds demand. And the whole thing is to know when to sell. When is the right time to sell? A lot of people sometimes they hold on too long, so. Well, um, I think this is the right time to sell this because it happens to be a popular decorative element at the moment. What could you sell? And I also love also, if you take a look here, it has the uh, label from the store where it was bought from in Manhattan. The only store of its kind, Barmont. Barmont. Yeah. 62 yeah. West 45th Street. <laughs> so. I was the only one working on it. Is it still there? <laughs> no, I checked it out. Came with a free bottle of whiskey you bought instead of four. These holes are so you can hang it on the rack. So it right. makes a nice set. Do you have all of them, by the way? Yes. Do you have all, all four? Yeah, if you all have four. the whole set. Four. Yeah. They're probably worth, oh, 25 to $40 each. I, I, I said the set will probably get about $100. About $100? Any interest in putting it up for sale? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> we'll do be it. happy to do that for you. Somebody Bob out there. Bob up for sale. Alan, you like to snack all the time. I have a table right here. I can put my chips on right. it during the show. Well, when we come back, you know, we have the mailbag. People send yes. us letters, and if they can't come to the apartment, they can send us pictures and videos. We get letters. A letter? We get lots and lots <laughs> of letters, oh, videotapes, but sometimes it doesn't work out with Annette sending us the right way, yes. the right kinds of pictures, videotapes, so we're going to be getting a lesson in how to send us to the mailbag so we get your letters, your pictures, your item appraised on the air. Stay with us for that. Here at FX, we want to know what you're thinking. That's why every day we go through all the mail. We get letters, faxes, voicemail, and email, and then I try and answer them every night on Backchat. Jeff Probst only on FX. TV with you in mind. Yeah, I think I'll just answer this one. Private. I cut my vitamin bill in half, thanks to Puritan's Pride. I saved over 50% on my vitamin purchase. Shopping with Puritan's Pride is like putting money back in your pocket. Hundreds of thousands of people are buying their vitamins, minerals, food supplements, and more from the pages of Puritan's Pride. Why? Just look at our fantastic two-for-one prices. Imagine getting not one, but two bottles of C500 with rose hips, both for just $4.70. Two for the price of one. And look, buy one bottle of ginseng and get another free. Two for $6.25. I bought one bottle of lecithin and got another one free. Just $4.65 for two bottles. Buying from Puritan's Pride means you're buying direct from one of America's leading vitamin manufacturers and one of the largest. We offer a tremendous variety of products. Hundreds of the finest vitamins, minerals, food supplements, and herbs, including the newest products nutritional science has to offer. Puritan's Pride offers you a full money-back guarantee on every purchase. So call now for your free 96-page Puritan's Pride catalog. Puritan's Pride, the smart way to buy vitamins. Looking for a free Walt Disney World vacation? Well, your ship just came in. The Big Red Boat gives you twice the vacation. A four-night cruise with non-stop entertainment. A complete youth program including 24-hour childcare. And two exotic ports of call. 
Plus, a three-night Walt Disney World Resort vacation absolutely free. For a free brochure on the Big Red Boat seven-night vacations, call Cruise Link Plus at 1-800-727-8565. <laughs> This is another FX Confidential, uncovering the truth behind Eight is Enough. By day, Tom Bradford is a mild-mannered journalist for the Sacramento Bee. You're a perfectly normal, healthy adult. But by night, he turns into Cha-Cha Man. The Cha-Cha? Oh, now that's dancing. Cha-Cha Man, working to keep his world running in rhythm. Ow! FX Confidential, exposing the real Tom Bradford. Who will be next? Me! Me! Eight is Enough, afternoons at 1, exclusively on FX. Welcome back now to Personal FX. A reminder about our 800 number to call about some of the items that have been up for sale. Finished eating, Alan? Yeah. Good. Right in the rest of the camera came right on. Finished. He has more <laughs> chips left. Over there. We're going to go back to Eugene and meet Larry, who has an item he'd like to have appraised. Hi, Larry. Welcome to the program. Hi. And what have you got there? Uh, a couple of salt and peppers. Uh, something that my uh, grandmother had way back when. My mom says she remembers when she was a girl that my grandmother had these. Uh, no marks. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they look a little like Moriaga, but I don't know. Well, let's find out from our experts here, Ellen and Judith. They well, look good. Can we see the bottoms, even though there's no mark? It's probably cork bottom. Yeah, yeah they're cork, cork bottoms. Cork in the bottom, and there's an applied uh, decoration, which could be moriage. I mean, you can't tell from here. <laughs> they look good, though. These look well made, and these yeah, look they, like they're an expensive piece like when nice they were probably bought in that, yeah, in that period of time. Um, right, you know, basically, when it comes to salt and peppers, those are the most popular, the figurals, uh -huh. and uh, those seem to tend to get the most money. But this seems what, to what, be... Well, this is country. fancy enough so that I think maybe it would, it would bring... You must know what country, though. Yeah, um, what, what country do you think? Say, but they, they look European. Yeah, they look German mm -hmm. okay. or Austrian to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, um, I would probably say a pair of these what? could probably fetch about $150. About $150? 75 to 100 75 to 150 is what we're hearing. They've been in that your sounds, fam family. That sounds good to me. <laughs> sounds good? You want to keep them or sell them? But you gotta, oh, no, no, you got to no, no, fill no. them up with salt and pepper before you send them out. Hey, hey, there's salt and pepper in them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what a deal. This guy's great. Set. Wonderful. So you're going to keep them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are stuck in the family forever. Well, keep them forever. That's great. Sure. Thanks so much okay. for joining us here today. Yeah, what a beautiful thanks. backdrop as well. Yeah, and all the trees great. in the Isn't back. That great? That's Lovely. great. Okay. We get mail. We get a lot of mail. We get about 2,000 pieces of mail a month. That's right. And about 100 pieces a day. But only a little over 50% can we use because something is wrong or there's some problems. So who better to ask? Is Josh around? Right Josh? here. Josh? Right Josh here. Weintraub, one of our uh, eighth production <laughs> associates here. One of the kings of the mail, yes? <laughs> make room here, Al. Make room, make this room. No mail. You're going to give us a lesson on the do's and the don'ts here? I'm going to do what I can. Claire. Okay. Uh, what are some of the real problems? Okay, the first, big first problems. things first. Don't, uh, we have a problem with people sending us their actual items that they want to, that they want to have appraised. Somebody we don't, just sent you the Yeah, we have item. a whole Barbie and Ken set here that some folks sent us and it's got oh, oh. it's got clothes and it's got <laughs> Wait a minute. we've, we've, we've received uh, we've received just about everything so we would rather do not send us your ob actual object and that's a valuable bag. object yeah, yeah i mean something like this is really valuable and the yeah, problem is it can get damaged in, in the mail the accessories are worth a lot of money too the, yeah. the clothing we can, shoes yeah, yes, we don't go. want to lose anything but anyway so please don't send us your actual items in the mail because the stuff can get damaged and uh it can get lost in the mail or damaged, and that's not what and we, we want to do. lose it, hurt it, or take responsibility we'll for it. I agree. That, uh, you know. Who knows? The stuff can just can just get Alan, damaged. Or just no, no, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean no, that. Speaking of somebody who opens the mail, I want to let you know that would never happen. Absolutely. So what else happens in terms of when you get pictures? Okay, well, well, quickly before we get to pictures, we also get things like faxes and photocopies of items, and that stuff can't be used either. Uh, we need it to be uh, the pictures as clear as possible. And when you have something like a fax or a photocopy, it's black and white. The appraisers can't get, the, can't get a, a good sense of what it's made of or uh, all of its markings and so Isn't on. Or the same problem with Polaroids? Yeah, Polaroids are also uh, problematic because they tend to be blurry yeah, and they're not as good. You can't focus a Polaroid if you get too close to the object. So if you want to get any detail, it's going to be blurry. So, okay, the faxes, photocopies, drawings, please don't. And these are some of the things that we have gotten, actually. Yeah, I mean, that sketch, for example, that's nice for the fridge, but it doesn't... Uh, 
It doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, it's, Maybe we, your fridge. Yeah, I mean, we appreciate the the time and energy somebody puts into something like that, but unfortunately, we can't use it on the. But air. at we least send us a picture. So what what are the problems with the pictures that okay. we get? Okay. First things, we need the photos. Obviously, just like Judith was saying, we need the stuff to be really clear. So please take time to light the photograph. Excuse me. To light the photographs well, uh, and to try to take pictures of all angles of the of the should, object. Should it's got put markings like a underneath. Or something in there also, so maybe That's we should not. Yeah, some of our best photos are stuff that has a, a ruler or a, a yardstick next to it. So but we sometimes can get an idea they of the send us pictures and we don't know even which item we're looking at. Yeah, we've seen pictures. This isn't one there. This is a, a blurry picture. But we've seen stuff, uh, for example, where there's the object is too small in the photograph. In other words, it's been taken from too far away. Like there's an example right there. We can't get much detail from it. Or uh, if they'll send us a, a photograph virtually of an entire collection there, and then it's how do we know which one we're supposed to be appraising? We and can't we're not get close much. up enough on any one of them. Definitely, right. definitely. Um, and basically, uh, what's going to happen is we also ask people to be pretty patient because we do get, just like you were saying, so much mail, and it takes time for us to go through all of it. But the same is true of videotapes. You need to. Definitely, the videotapes also need to be well lit uh, and try to keep the camera as steady as possible, and also well packaged. Here's an example of something that got a video that got crushed in the mail. So oh no. send it in a padded pack if you can, if it's a video. Um, what you're going to be receiving when you send us a trash or treasure mm -hmm. uh, mailbag submission is if we cannot use your, photo, your photos or your video for whatever reason, you'll be getting a postcard like this one. And uh, this postcard right down here, you, we will get, give you a little indication, your address goes here. And right here you'll get a little indication of why we couldn't use it. Uh, it'll, it'll say something like photos were too blurry, or too many objects in the photo or something like that. But we'd that. like to be able to eventually use everybody's Absolutely. That's why we give you as clear directions as we can so that you can resend the we stuff. Keep you pretty we should busy. do a segment on <laughs> photography. This way we could show everybody how to take a picture and then boom, well, we'd have no problem. It's amazing. <laughs> are unusable. This whole basket was unusable. It's a tremendous um, amount of stuff. Furthermore, if your stuff is usable, mm -hmm. you'll be getting a little sort of package in the mail addressed to you like that. That's John Smith. Uh, you'll get a little photo, a little letter from us. Uh, nicely personalized with your name at the top and a release form which we need so uh, to give us the right to use it and a self-addressed stamped envelope so get okay, it back. This will make everybody happy. Everybody will be a win-win situation. I easier hope so. Easier for the staff and easier for everybody writing to us. That's right. Thank you for a good lesson here. No problem. On what to do because we're going to be opening up the mailbag in just a moment and also want to let you know that in addition to writing to us if you want to communicate with us all you have to do is call us at 212-802-4081. You can fax us at 212-802-4201 or write to us. We'd like to hear from you. P.O. Box 826, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 101590826. And we're going to be opening up the mailbag for those people who did send in the good pictures, videotapes, right? right? In just a moment. <laughs> A whirlwind of romance is hitting in living color. A world of nocturnal commissions. So watch the comedy and romance of in living color every night only on FX. You know, you'd look great as a blonde. Do I know you? Nice and easy. 104, it's you. <laughs> well, I've never colored my hair. Oh, trust me. See, Nice and Easy works with your hair's own tones and highlights. Look at mine. Does that look natural? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time to print. What's She's going to stop traffic. It's nice and easy to be natural. Why would you get siding installed on your house now? Well, the special offer from Sears is a good reason, but it's not as impressive as this. Before and after. After it's sided, your home will look better than ever. Siding from Sears gives your home a gorgeous new appearance that lasts for years. Sears siding transforms almost any kind of home. Wood frame, stucco, brick. Vital coverings look great on hard to paint eaves and overhangs too. Call now to take advantage of our special offer. There's no obligation. Plus convenient credit plans are available. Call and before you know it, your home will look beautiful now and ever after. Call 1-800-293-6800 now to arrange for your free in-home inspection and estimate on Sears Premium Vinyl Siding. Now's the perfect time to make your home look new. So call now, 1-800-293-6800. 
ever wish you could have it all? Yeah. Well, your wish is coming true in February, because FXM Movies from Fox has got it all. You mean we'll have wash tubs with running water? Shut your mouth! Well, I'm wishing for plenty of action, comedy, drama, and romance. You'll get all that, plus all that jazz. It's showtime, folks. What about some excitement and adventure? You're a spy, Mr. Leland. There's Patton, Tribes, and the Seven Ups. I also want love and laughter. Check out Grand Canyon, Two for the Road, and Silver Streak. That's my man! That's my man! <laughs> now I wish upon a star. Well, FXM's got a sky full. Stars like Betty Davis, Sean Connery, Dustin Hoffman, Elizabeth Taylor, Frank Sinatra, Henry Fonda, and Sally Field. I ain't gonna bite you. Wow, all this February, FXM, movies from Fox, Hollywood's first movie network, really is making wishes come true. Well, ain't that a kick in the head. Wish I had it. Just call your local cable operator. I like that. Only fair that you should be held in. Welcome back now to Personal FX. We're about to recap some of the items that are up for sale. And it's only fair that this time, I'm you know, you're holding man. up. Right. Here we go. Well, let's start with the glass bowl. You held that last yes, time. Yes, my modest bowl. No okay. comparison to his staff. And it's called sure. what kind of glass? This is Murano glass. It's made by Vanini. Vanini. Thank mm -hmm. you. Worth $150 to $300. And then we have the glass staff, which is mm -hmm. unusual. It's a beautiful glass piece. Staff. I like it a lot. Lovely. Very good condition. Worth about $200 to $500. And Snow White. And all the dwarfs are somehow assembled among all the of the male. The male that wasn't usable. Some of them lying down in right. the house, I see. Worth $20 to $30, but our star is Snow White, and she's worth a little bit more, you'd Couple say. Of dollars, yes. Couple of dollars more. So if you want to call us at our 800 number, do give us a call. These are the items that are getting bids on. And now we're going to go back to Eugene. We've got Larry with us with an item to be appraised. Hi, Larry. Welcome to the show. Hi, Claire. What have you got to have appraised? This is a chair that was uh, brought over from Germany in 1885 uh, to uh, Oregon. Uh, it was given to my grandparents in uh, 1904 as a wedding present. As far as I know, it was part of a set. Uh, I don't know that for sure. Uh, my grandfather used to sit in it every day, and I can remember seeing him that, and I have no idea other than what I've told you as to the history or style or anything like that. Well, let's give you some more information here. Well, it's a, it's a bent wood chair. Um, it has a nice pierced seat. It is obviously old, but it's in fabulous condition. It's not Great been condition. refinished, has it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. It has been refinished, okay. Yes. That always detracts from the value a little bit. Um, so don't refinish? But, well, it depends. If the mm -hmm. original finish is in terrible shape, you're going to have to refinish. Yeah, well, refinishing won't hurt it because, mm -hmm. you know, you can always polish and take care of your pieces as long as you just don't strip it too far where it really takes away from the piece itself. Uh, you, can use, you can lose a lot of detailing sometimes when you refinish your piece also. Can we get a close-up of the seat? Can we look down on the seat? Mm -hmm. well, it's like early ventilation that, there. Yeah, and so, aside <laughs> from I think that a heavy crack. grandmother sat on that too for a while. Aside from the crack there, it's got a nice design. It has that um, five-pointed star design in the seat. What is this worth? Uh, probably two to four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, I'd say about two fifty to three hundred dollars. It's a nice chair. It's a great example. It's a beautiful piece. Mm. Larry, and worth about two to four hundred dollars. Would you were you interested in putting it up for sale? No, I would not. Ah, another piece. <laughs> it's part of the family. Um, if it's part of the family, you got to keep it in the family. Thank you so much for sharing part of your family with us today. Thank you. And now we're going to the mailbag. We've gotten the lessons on the mail. I hope I didn't insult his grandmother then. <laughs> I feel well, terrible. <laughs> I didn't know it was a family chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. You just meant it at a, at a light matter. That's right. We're going to open up the mailbag right now and hear from you. I did get a letter from somebody yesterday, a wonderful letter, and she told me all about her item, but she never enclosed any pictures or videotape. Oh dear. So, see, that was also a thing unusable. we can't embrace. Unusable. But, first usable letter. Barbara Borchers has written us from Covington, Kentucky. Um, I'm enclosing a photo of a set of Mickey and Minnie marionettes which I purchased several years ago at a garage sale. I'm sure they were less than $5. The strings caused us so much trouble, I just put them away and forgot them until your show came around. The dolls are 11 inches tall, and I think they have composition heads, hands, and feet. The body and legs are made of wood. The clothes are original. They both come in the mini box. There is a sticker on the box, which is, is just torn, but readable. Walt Disney Productions. On the box, it says they were made in England by the Pelham Puppet Company in Marlborough, Wiltshire, England. It also came with an instruction sheet. 
Um, yeah, basically these pieces here were very popular in the United States. They were imported in from England. And um, they were only done in about the 70s or so. They don't appear to me to be uh, any earlier than that. And uh, they're pretty popular. A lot of people have them. They're not, unfortunately, they're not very expensive. But uh, they're pretty nice pieces. But, and I also, I mean, there's a price for mint in the box and a mm -hmm. price for not having the box. And it seems that there's only one box here. And that, that makes a difference. They couldn't both fit in that box. Mm -hmm. But mint in the box, they're probably worth $55 a piece, 55 mm -hmm. 65 something like that. Yeah. So you have to just subtract for having only one box. Mini in the box between 50 to 75 and Mickey without about 35 About 35 Okay, Barbara, thank you so much for writing to us. Next, we heard from Don Lindsay from mm. Biloxi, Mississippi, who writes, Hi, I catch your show frequently during my lunch hour here in Mississippi. I have often wondered if there's any value to this lunch box. It reads, Thermos Division, King Sealy Thermos Company, C. Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Inc. It's in great condition. And it's definitely worth something. And Does it have the thermos? We don't know. Yep, yeah, there's the there thermos. Is. Perfect. Whoa. Yeah, this is worth a lot of money. And the inside, you take a look, there's no scratching on the inside, which is really uncommon for lunch boxes. You'll find a lot of scratching on the inside from the thermos. A lot of kids wrote in it. This seems like to be in tremendous yeah, condition. It seems to me like it was never used. And we've learned but, on this show, yeah. lunch boxes collectible, especially with Lunch thermos. boxes look for these kind uh -huh. of lunch boxes and will pay a very high premium on it because it's in such terrific shape. But be careful when you judge a lunch box, the rim going around mm -hmm. the picture, as you see that yellow rim, if if it's very scratched up, it will deteriorate from the value. This looks very nice, and I'd say about right. at least 200 to $225. If it was a little bit more scratched up, about $150. Mm -hmm. and, and also, any scratching anywhere will detract from the price, and I, I think it's probably worth in the 175 to two and a quarter range. Okay, Don Lindsay, nice thank place. you so much for writing to us. And next, we got a letter from Wayne and Pat Davies from Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. And we have Pat on the line right now. I think this is our first Canada call. Pat, welcome to the program. Hello, Claire. Nice to have you on the line. And tell us about this bag that you wrote us about. Well, it's actually just a small suitcase. Mm -hmm. um, I knew it as a weekend case or a makeup case pictures of Elvis Presley on it with his guitar and his signature all over it. And the mirror's missing out of the middle. There's no real damage to the thing other than it's missing that. We're just wondering what it might be worth and what well, the mirror might let's be. Let's help you out here. This is a really substantial collectible. I see a little wear along the edges, so I wouldn't call it mint. And the mirror can be replaced, so mm -hmm. that's not much of a problem. But this is hot. King collectibles are hot. Yeah. Yeah, this is a great piece, and this is a well-made piece. So this was expensive in 56 when it was made. And I've seen this before. It's a really dynamite piece. Still, there may not be a lot of them around. There's not a lot or? of them around. The condition does make a difference, but in general, they're really hard to find in any shape, and Elvis collectors mm -hmm. will really just grab these as soon as yeah, they see this them. Is, this is worth over $200. It's probably worth two and a quarter, two fifty. Uh, and I don't know how to interpret that into Canadian dollars, but we can figure it out. So. No, but I'd say <laughs> this can go between uh, two to three fifty, depending on where you sell it, what part of the country. Oh yeah. But, uh, and the so Canadian exchange rate is a. It's one point four. So it's a dollar forty in Canadian money to a dollar. But whoever money. bids will give it. Well, yeah, American yeah. dollars, whatever. Get out your calculator and figure it out. <laughs> well, we don't know. Pat may not want to put it up. About two eighty. Okay, about two eighty. Thanks, Mike. Pat, was there any interest in putting this up for sale? Well, yeah, it belongs to actually my sister-in-law, and she said if the price is right, she'd sell it. That's a different show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're we'll willing to we adopt the phrase. It's sure. a good phrase, and we'll be happy to put it up for sale for you. Okay. Great item, and thanks for being our first Canadian caller here on the program. And also want to let you know that if you have something, now that we've given you a lesson on how to write to us and enclose the pictures and videotapes, here's the address again, P.O. Box 826, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 101590826. And coming up next, it's Big Bit Time. Stay with us for that. Household break-ins are often preventable. FX wants you to take a stand. Here are some tips. First, always make sure your doors and windows are locked whenever you're asleep or away. And if you're leaving your house for a while, let your neighbors know so they can watch and report any suspicious activity to the police. For information on how to prevent crime in your neighborhood, call the National Crime Prevention Council at this number. Don't wait to take action. Be part of the solution. Stop the anger in neighborhood destruction. Take a stand. Okay class, today we're going to fix a nice little salad. 
How about that? Remember that little salad from high school? It became fun, and accordingly, so did the salad dressing. Now there's new Kraft Catalina with honey. Unlike your usual dressing, Kraft adds honey to its tangy Catalina for a sweeter taste that's really different. Just like that nice little salad of yours. Now salads are fun. So is new Kraft Catalina with honey, the fun way to dress. Now more and more people are discovering WalkFit, the safe and easy and effective way to get a total body aerobic workout. WalkFit combines a treadmill with an upper body exerciser to give you a far more effective workout in the same amount of time. And it's non-motorized, so you, not a motor, set the pace. Exercise bikes, motorized treadmills, and stair steppers only work the lower body. And that's only half a workout. With WalkFit, you work the entire body, raising your metabolism to burn fat and calories fast. And all it takes is just 20 minutes a day, three times a week. And because it works all five major muscle groups, the chest, the abdominals, arms, legs, and back, you can burn 850 and up to 1,000 calories an hour on WalkFit. Compared to ordinary treadmills, WalkFit burns 53% more calories and provides an over 50% greater cardiovascular workout. WalkFit's monitor tracks the progress of your workout and is constructed of wood and steel for stability and strength. WalkFit uses the same flywheel as the legendary Nordic Track skier to provide a smooth, dependable, even tread motion. The resistance setting of the WalkFit treadmill and upper body exerciser can be adjusted separately so you can customize your workout. I found with the WalkFit it has increased my energy. This thing is the best thing that ever happened to fitness as far as I'm concerned. Hi, I'm Melissa at WalkFit. When you call the number on your screen, you'll be talking to a fitness consultant like me, and we can show you how easy it is to get started on your fitness program today. Call for your free video and brochure and find out how you can have WalkFit in your home. WalkFit, the total body fitness machine from Nordic Track, America's number one fitness company. Call now for your free video and brochure. If you're in the New York City area or you're just planning to visit and you'd like to be a guest in our FX apartment and have something appraised, hey, just give us a call. 212-802-4081. Welcome back now to Personal FX, and it's time to tell you about some of the big bids of the day. Are you ready to hear? Sure. Let's start with you, Don. For the glass bowl, uh, we have an offer from B from Illinois for $195. I'll think about it. Please think about it. Mary Lou for the glass staff, Michelle has called in from Huntsville, Alabama with an offer of $300. I'll think about that. Okay, we have some thinking to do here. Now Lisa, we got an offer for Snow White and Snow White only from Kathy from Grand Rapids, Michigan for $350. I think that we'll think about it. <laughs> I think, I think she gave we'll you a do. lot to think yeah. about here. I think uh, I don't have too much to think about. That's a lot more than the appraised value, but you think just, about it. Just snow, just just snow, snow white. white. You okay. think about all of that? All right. Got a lot of thinking going on. And John, you are in the most beautiful setting today. I love those trees behind you. Claire, I, I really wish you could be here with me. It's too bad you got to co-host the show for Manhattan. <laughs> it well, is really. somebody's got to do it. And, and by the way, here's the cat. You think I'm getting this cat as a show-off? I have found the neighborhood show-off. That's the wildlife here in Oregon. That cat is following you, John. You found a friend. A show-off is what I found. <laughs> uh, listen, tomorrow, Claire, as you know, is our big appraisathon. We're going to be in Coburg, Oregon, and I'm going to be with about 150 of my closest friends. Going to be appraising items all day, right after the other. We're going to play beat the appraisals. clock tomorrow, John. That's get, right. Get in all those appraisals here. Yeah, I think the cat's coming. I think he has a mouse he wants Dang. to.